Oh, boyfriends, have we got a treat for you. We have traveled to the opposite side of the world. We have brought back the thunder from down under. His name is JRP, and this is Metroid Zero Mission. Take it away. Are we ready? All right. I'm ready. Are you ready? Yep. Perfect. Uh, three, two, one, go. Nice. All right. Nice. Welcome to the Let's get a quick roll call here on the couch. I'm John Unful. I am Dragon Dark. I'm Mr. Underscore Shasta. The underscore is very important. Very important. Yes. yes. <laughs> All right. So, zero mission any percent. Uh, this is a category that's got a long and storied history. The game released in 2004. Shortly after that, the any percent route was figured out. And then in 2013, Dragon Fangs found a way to pick up a different super missile tank that wasn't really faster, but it was more consistent. And then in 2016, okay. ZX-497 came up with a trick to do something different that meant we didn't have to do the old thing, so we were back to the original route. And that's where we're at today, right that where is we a, were that in is 2004. A, that is a great story of Thank how the has <laughs> evolved. That's, that's, that's pretty much it. So all the Zero Mission runs, they start off the same way. We start off here in Brinstar, we pick up the Morph Ball, we get the missiles, the bombs. And that's really cool, by the way. Yeah. There's a lot of cool stuff that goes on in Brinstar, for, including this climb. Oh, no. A lot of very fast movement in general throughout this game. This game runs on Metro, as like a monster version of Metroid Fusion Engine, which that run, game runs a little slower, but this game is very fast, yeah. on the contrary. Yeah, they adjusted the physics quite a bit in this one, so it's very, very snappy to control. Also, no, this game is a remake of Metroid 1 for the NES. Yes. Yes. Um, Samus also feels much heavier in this game than she does in a lot of other, in a, uh, a lot of other titles. Yeah, um, nice. The jump height isn't quite as high at the beginning, um, and she just kind of falls like a lead weight. So you have to really be able to react quickly when you're going down like yep. long shafts. Yep. Right here, JP's going to come up on, on kind of the first main boss of the game. He's going to go yep. for a double missile, which is frame perfect, if I remember correctly. Yep. There we go. Uh, I didn't oh, quite get good. it. That's cool. See if we can get back up right here. Second one. Ah, uh, uh, just that's missed. That's not actually a big though. deal. No, actually. Oh. There's been, in the past year, there's been a somewhat new development where we actually pick up Charge Beam right here. Oh. Let's just pick up all these missiles and not have to worry about picking them up elsewhere. That's good. It's a surprise. Not really faster, but it's significantly more consistent, so everyone does it. Slight variation on that climb there. And now we're coming up to one of the more infamous rooms in the game, the Hive Room. The Hive Room. This room isn't too bad if you go and get Long Beam ahead of time, but... Getting long beam is slow. Yeah, it Very is. Very slow. But thanks to Sam the Digital, who was going to be here on the couch, but he had a little uh, difficulty reading the calendar, so he's showing up one day later than he should have. <laughs> <laughs> so shout outs to Sam for that. But he found this strat that is actually slower, but you can get through Hive Room with no trouble literally every single time. So that that is one of the best contributions that Sam has had, and it is technically slower, which I find funny. First energy tank. Just the free tank there, or free tank, if you will. Nice. Yeah. E-tanks are very important because they, they give you more energy, lets you live longer. And specifically, uh, we damage abuse against Ridley, so we kind of need the health to not die there. I've done early on as well, too. There's a lot of rooms that have uh, varying enemy patterns in them, especially those gamers that, that you're seeing in the last few rooms. So, like, a lot of time we're doing, we're doing certain movements here that you think would be kind of useless, but sometimes it just, avo it just allows you to kill enemies just very easily when we do them. Yep, and we got the bombs. Bombs are a really important upgrade in this game. Very, very good. They break bomb blocks, like these ones like right this? here. They kill enemies, like these bugs right here. These bugs are so Oh, crazy. they're, they're random. random. Yeah, they're random. They are completely random when they feel like falling out of there, and they may not fall in places that you can even get to them sometimes. Yeah, sometimes the bug will just stay up there for 5, 10, 15 seconds, and you can do literally nothing but wait for it to fall down. It's Except for reset good. the game at that you point. Can, you can reset. <laughs> that is a possibility. I, I don't know that that's a, a marathon strat, unfortunately. Definitely not. You just gotta go. Yep, you gotta run with it. So now we... Now, what JRP's trying to do is he's going to want to try to get up to full health here. So 
A little bit later in Brinstar, he's going to be farming some enemy drops, and that's because he actually wants missiles. So he needs health to get missiles because of how the drop system works. Yeah, and this game is kind of a priority system. If you're not at full of something, it is going to try to drop whatever you don't have. Yeah, so yeah. if he's not full on health, um, he's going to get either health or missiles. Whereas if he is full health, it's just basically always going to give him missiles. Unless the game's not feeling ooh, great. Ooh, there we go. Good drop. Good drop. So now he's at full health. Now he, in theory, he'll be seeing more missile drops. In reality, we'll find out. But the goal, the whole goal of this is to avoid refilling earlier on in Norfair, which is uh, where we're at right now. Well, that's in time. the cutscene. Yeah, so this is... There's two possible ways to do any percent. I mean, th this one is the faster way. We're gonna go do Ridley first, then we're gonna go do Crate afterwards. But you can actually do Crate before Ridley. Um, yeah. And the reason, the, one of the big reasons why we don't is because if you do Crate first, there's an extra cutscene leaving Crate's layer yeah. that wastes about, I think it's 20 seconds or so. Yeah. Um, so we just completely skipped that by doing Ridley first. Yep, nice missile drops. So the, the number to keep in mind for missiles is by the time he reaches Ice Beam, he wants to see at least 13. More than that is obviously better, but... But first we have to make a detour up here to pick up a power-up. It's called um, Power Grip, yep. which is going to allow Joel, uh, GRP, to um, um, Rip, grab on the ledges. Grab on the ledges, yeah. Which, oh. um, it's not so much necessary that he can do that, it's just that yeah, there's it's just, a... It's a really arbitrary vine in the way that only goes away when you pick it up. Exactly, it's and... Very silly. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong, Power Grip is a still very useful ability. Yeah, I mean, on the other hand, imagine playing through this game without it. <laughs> You'd have to bomb jump everywhere, and it would be horribly slow and annoying. From what I remember, Metroid's the mission of randomizers. A power grip is like the, the best time to get because of that. Yeah, this, <laughs> in the randomizer especially, you can get stuck in so many places. With yeah, that. it's like if you don't have bombs or, or a power grip, it's, you're just kind of screwed in all, sp in all spots. Yep. So you, you saw a little technique there where he jumped, then placed the bomb in midair, then jumped back into it. And that lets him essentially save a bomb. Um, bomb. Possible blocks. Those blocks are really difficult to shoot. They look easy, but they're, not. they're, they're nope. just waiting. Yeah. <laughs> they're waiting to talk to you. So this this is actually the only infinite bomb jump we'll see in any percent, where he's basically just going to be chaining these explosions to gain all the height. Oh. Uh, okay. uh, never mind. I guess that's. We're not. just going to do wall. I couldn't oh, hit the bombs properly. Oh. Yep. Oh. Wall jump back up. That's okay. That doesn't lose. I thought about to do like a midair bomb jump or something. That would be really cool. <laughs> Nice shot. Yeah, shooting can be difficult at times. Yeah, there's actually, um, for infinite bomb jump, there's actually two different strategies for it. You can either just lay one bomb at a time, and, you'll, and oh. um, you just time it, so you kind of gain a little bit of height each time. You can do what Jolt, what JRP was doing, um, where he lays two bombs, and he'll, he'll explode and move them up basically the height of two separate bombs, and he drops back down one, and then drops yeah. two more bombs. And it actually is a faster strat to use two of them. Yeah, it's much faster. It is more difficult, but so now we, we saw that he took a hit earlier, so he's definitely going to be looking for another health drop. Uh, his missile count is right where he wants it to be, but he's still going to want full health. And he's got it. Perfect. Nice. Uh. Nah, that's a shame. Hit the... The pickup hitboxes are really funky. Like the sprite shows up, and then a little bit later the hitbox shows up, so you can actually collect it. It's it's odd. And yeah, I they did it that way. Yeah. So up, uh, we're coming up to uh, what I think is personally the coolest item in the game. Ooh. The the ice beam. Boo. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I thought he was getting ice cream. Ooh, that's a good. Oh, oh, that's that's not good. I like ice cream. That's that's cool. I'll have to go into the lava there. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but ice beam is the most broken item in the game, and we don't really see a ton of that in any present. So you see, he's opting to skip that heal. You can also skip these uh, rippers right here by just wall jumping right past them. Yeah, you're supposed to freeze everything through what? here to get through, but you can just kind of jump right past all of it, including this guy. Yeah, and it gives you a map, yeah. and you don't want that. Yeah, that guy shows you where... I think it's where Ridley speed is. Speed booster. Oh, speed booster. Uh, right? yeah, the speed booster guy. Yeah, that's not... We, go, we don't we go already, on the intent path in We already know where that is. We don't need him. Yeah, exactly. Anyway, I appreciate what he's trying to do here, but we don't need him. We've all played the game many a time. It's all exactly. good. 
Nice little shortcut in here. Let's us get down to Ridley without picking up the speed booster. I just want to point out, he jumped very early um, towards the wall because there's crumble blocks there that will drop you all the way back oh, down yeah. below, and you have to go all the way back around to get back up Yeah, there. you have to take a nice victory lap if you do that. Yeah, this gives a lot of uh, uh, developer intent shortcuts like that, so you'll see throughout the yeah, run. That's the, that's the main one. Gets you right down where Ridley is. There's actually only one thing we do in this run that's not developer intended. Uh, All right. Wow, that's really 18 lucky. 18 is 18. exactly the exactly number he needs here. So don't miss. No pressure. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good call. Excuse me? Uh, okay, that's fine. It's all good. This is fine. Okay. Yeah. Good. Uh, that went really weird. Yeah, it was a bit funky, but he got it. He's through it. It's all good. That's a, that's a, um, I've forgotten the word. <laughs> it's a big bug. It's a... Uh, Imago Cocoon. Yes. That's the name of it. Yes. yes. It's a deceivingly difficult boss fight. Yeah, the hitboxes and the vines are not always what you would think they would be. Mm -hmm. um, and actually getting the missiles to connect, um, sometimes the body will just block them, and sometimes that ripper will get in the way as well. Yeah, and trying to fit three missiles into the vine in one jump is uh, surprisingly tight. So now we're, now we're down in Ridley. Ridley is pretty nice. We can just take this nice handy backward shortcut and avoid all the stuff that you're supposed to do. Yeah, this is supposed to be where you, like, where you exit Ridley, not where you enter it. Yep. I'm uh, picking it up um, okay. to get more so health back. He's only got 33 health and one E-Tech. Oh, nice no. oh. jump. <laughs> so this room is one of the deadlier rooms in any percent because you can only pick up the one E-Tank, and these enemies do a ton oh, of damage. No. So he's yeah, he's taking this. Good, good. Oh, a little yeah. bit safe. Uh -oh. Oh, uh. <laughs> okay, he's good. We're mad right. chilling, mad chilling. It's okay. Mad chilling. Mad All right, we're fine. Chilling. Perfect. <laughs> All right. We're through it. <laughs> okay. Whew. I was a little scared there. Don't fall here. Oh. Oh. Don't fall here. Wow. He didn't fall. All right, we're good. Yeah. That. That enemy. <laughs> So yeah, that means you, the worst. If you fall down there, that floor is all crumble blocks, so you have to, surprise, go all the way back around or try to jump off the crumble blocks, which is annoying. But you really don't want to miss that because you want super missiles. Super yep. missiles do five times the damage of standard missiles. Yep. Um, so that's effectively two missile tanks you just picked up right yep. there. Super missiles are super important. They're good item. Nice. And any percent is extra scary because you got to go across that room twice. We're gonna pick up this other super missile tank here, and that'll give us enough ammo to kill Ridley. You need a super missile to get in. The block he just destroyed was actually a super missile block, yep. so he would not, he had to go over and get the other one first to be able to get, even get at this one. And another thing to mention is that if you're more familiar with other Metroid games, in particular Super Metroid, the charge beam is a very, very useful item for killing bosses. And the charge beam in Zero Mission is just flat out awful. It does hardly any damage. So you, we really rely more on missiles and super missiles. And on top of that, there are several bosses that aren't even damaged by a charge beam to begin with. So we gotta have plenty of ammo for those anyway. Yeah, charge beam is mostly useful for the uh, ghetto screw attack. Yep. Um, which we we can't go get screw attack. It takes way too long to get yeah, screw attack. Is buried deep in North Bear. You have to go way out of your way to get it. Okay, so this is Ridley. Um, yep. There's a lot of damage boosting that's going to be happening here. Yep. Uh, you saw JRP pick up the safety E tank, and that's because the strategy in Zero Mission Ridley is to run into him and shoot until he dies. There's, there's, there's not a whole lot going on here. This game has many strengths, many things that make it a very interesting speed run. Ridley is not one of them. No, the bosses, <laughs> in general, are not uh, the strengths of this particular game. I know it's also good for each shot four missiles while he was inside really just damage boosting at that. That's pretty tight to do that for the refresh lead. Yep. So only get three there. Nice drops. Nice. Red drops, yeah. yeah. A little low on missiles, but the four super missiles are the important bit there. It's really good. He actually jumped there as well to manipulate the B to go a little bit higher so he could freeze it high enough that he could make the jump all the way up top. Yep. Uh, freeze it at, at base height, he'd still have to do a bomb jump to reach the top of it. Yep. So now he's going to be making his way out of Ridley right the way he came back. He's just going to take a short detour here to pick up another energy tank. And three energy tanks is pretty safe. Uh, most, you know, the most deadly part of the game is really just trying to do Ridley with one energy tank. Just because if you, uh, you know, if you run into him too early, then he's going to kill you. 
or if you run into his tail, that does actually mm -hmm. more damage than running into his body. Yeah, that'll do it. Yeah. I believe it's 50 damage on normal difficulty, and the body's only about 30. Yeah. So now he's gonna go back out the way he came in, which is that, that was, that's actually how they intended. Yeah, that's, to get out of here. that's what you're yeah. supposed to do. Yep. Nice. Um, that was fine, Piffy. <laughs> so then you actually can't go back up the way you came. Yeah, you um, go the bug, the, like because you you came down crumble blocks to get to a Mago cocoon, but now you have to go kind of this way in order to even get back up top. And yeah. They have these bomb launchers which let you get up. The screw attack blocks was left if you have that, but you're supposed, to, you're another supposed to run all the way to the left to pick up screw attack with speed booster there. But we don't have speed okay. booster, so we uh, we won't be doing that. We don't need screw attack anyway. It's a nice item to have. It's very comfy. It's very fast. Yep. So now he's going to take another small detour to get high jump. It seems like this is really out of the way, but high jump is one of those things that it saves time every single time you jump. And as you may have noticed, jumping is a somewhat common event in this game. Yeah, jump is pretty important in video games in general. Yeah. It's, you know, it's, it's something that it saves, you know, a handful of frames every single time you need to jump, and you jump, what, two, oh, three, what? four five times? Yeah, like, he could only, he'd only make it about two-thirds of the way up to that platform up there, um, but with high jump, you could just go all, you go straight up to it. Yep. And high jump without space jump, or space jump without high jump, right? It feels you ever, like you ever Samus, that? It feels like Samus has weights attached to it. Yeah, that's, that's not a fun time. Mm -hmm. But now he's, uh, now he's making his way over to the other boss. Raid. We're not quite there yet, but and yeah, in, gotta... crate, in the crate area, we're actually coming up to really the route-defining trick for this category. Ah, that's a shame. And that's, that's the... really hard. Yeah, that's very hard, yeah. And this, this trick basically lets us, well, skip the acid worm, which is really out of the way and doesn't actually do anything necessary. We just have to kind of do some weird bomb hitbox shenanigans to get to... Uh, across the pit of acid that is otherwise blocking our path. And it's, uh, it's a trick that's been somewhat um, polarizing, I might, I might want to say. It's one of the harder tricks on the run. Yeah, sure. for sure. Um, it's at least not as hard as the, as the other version of it. Um, there's two ways you can do it. One is much, much easier. Um, Yes. But kind of requires have already having uh, power grip. The other method, if we when we were doing crate first, um, horizontal bomb jump. Horizontal bomb jumps oh, are no. really no. difficult. Yep. Yeah. But the, in recent years, there's been like a number of different ways that have been come up with to do this trick, and you know none of them are really necessarily faster or slower. It's really just about finding a strat that you're comfortable with. A JRP is going to be doing the standard four bomb method here, and we're right at it. So let's just see if he gets it. Yeah, keep, on, keep on on it right now. Let's see if he gets it. Nice, easy every time. Good job. Good stuff. Good stuff. I'm not gonna lie, I kinda wanted to see horizontal bomb jumping, but that's all right. The problem is he only really gets one shot at that because the block blows yeah, up when he drops the ball. Oh. Yep. He either has to leave the room entirely to reset the block, or he has to uh, shift over to doing a horizontal bomb jump. Yep. So here we're picking up the last unknown item, which I've realized we've totally not mentioned yet. Basically, there are a certain selection of items that were not in original NES Metroid but they lock them behind, like, the progression. It's, it's funky. It should all, actually, something else we didn't mention about high jump is that it also allows um, morph ball jumping. Oh, yeah, we didn't. Which um, just saves a lot on having to just bomb your way up to locations. Mm -hmm. um, which, I mean, that that's a huge time save. Yeah, the bomb, the bomb fuse is about three quarters of a second, I think, so. We'll... It's actually 60 frames, exactly. Oh, is it? Okay. All right, no here we go. That because you, because. Um... Oh, hold up, hold up. We've got a very oh, difficult yeah. boss fight coming yes. up here. This is very Ray. hard, very difficult. He has to press B three Black times. Ray. Whoa! Perfect. <laughs> what? He did it. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah. I mean, yeah, three whole button presses. That is a lot. That's a lot. That's that's like more than two. That's a lot more than two. It's fifty percent more than two. <laughs> huh? But he, he got through Kraid. I don't know about that math right there. <laughs> You're not supposed to have super missiles for Kraid, which is why. Oh, refill bitch. Refill glitch. Oh, nice. 
Cool. So he's refilling while this is all playing, and it saves saves a decent bit of time, and it makes the statue all blue. <laughs> That's a Choco, I'm sure of it. Yeah, it is. So now we have Speed Booster, yep. which, I mean, we gotta speed. go fast. Yeah. It's, it's, it's the, the speed item. item, it's the yeah. fast one. The more important feature of it is Shine Sparking, which he's gonna use right there, and unlike Super Metroid, it does not drain your health. So, you know, you, you just don't have to think about that, and you can do it everywhere. Also, unlike Super Metroid, you can recharge your your oh, ooh, bar. I love it. Um, if, you hit, if you hit a slope, that's really fun. Samus would just start running again. Yep. And it's similar to Fusion in that regard. And Zero Mission also added in Ball Sparking, which lets you try and spark in more ball form. And that comes into play a bit later. And now that we've killed the two main bosses, we're going to be on our way to Torian, which is guarded by what nobody calls the Mossy Two. Uh, <laughs> bad rip response. That ripper uh, right there. <laughs> Some good enemies. Likes to do that there. sometimes. I think this is actually a pretty good time for you to drop in this particular donation. Go for it. We have fifty dollars from C Scotty W. Oh, oh no. Who says? <laughs> and an extra twenty dollars for every super drop in Turian. Wow. Ooh. Mm. That's a bold proposition. Very bold. Well, maybe not. I mean, knowing JRP and Super Drops and Torian. I guess I'll count it. If, if it does happen. If it were me, we'd get none. Well, yeah, that's that's what I'm saying. So for <laughs> Scotty, that was probably a safe donation. But, all right, Torian. Torian is the most interesting part of any percent. There is so much going on that I'm absolutely not going to be able to explain here. But the general gist of it is that Metroids drop health, missiles, and super missiles. As we mentioned previously, health and missiles are connected, so he's gonna wanna stay at full health all the time to get missile drops. And he's also gonna want super missile drops because super missiles are five missiles, so they're just faster. And particularly in this case, Metroids die in five regular missile hits, yep. so one super will just destroy Metro immediately. Yep, so, and then the, the overall idea is because our ammo is so limited, he wants to kind of balance his missile and super missile usage so he doesn't get, you know, so he does not full on missiles and he's getting a bunch of missile drops, so they're not wasted, as you might say. Oh, Yeah, that was a little unlucky. He was looking for more health there. So in each room, um, there's a set number of Metroids that will only activate when you actually get close oh, enough to them. One. Yep. Um, and what he's going to be trying to do in a lot of these rooms um, is just group them together, and instead of like waiting for one to spawn and then moving on to the next one, he's going to generally go with two of them at a time. Except that one. <laughs> yeah, it, the other thing to note about the Metroids is that the time they take to kind of spawn from their spawn point is kind of random. Three. Oh, three. Oh, where is it? That's kind of the first half of Torian. He's in really good shape. He's only short five missiles, which is excellent. He's gonna want to start using supers here because these spawn points can Four. kind of. Oh, I see. <laughs> these, oh, wow. Yeah, these spawn points Six can kind so of kill you a little bit. Oh. Whoops. Oh, well. We'll be fine. Yeah, this is the last room here. It's all good. He's looking to come out of this room with as many missiles and supers as possible. Preferably all of them. Yes. Ooh, that was close. Oh, come on. Get a super, come on. Make it seven. Oh, oh eh. unfortunate. Okay. Not bad. That's fine. Not bad. That's an extra. What? So Jerry. now we play the waiting game. Yep. So now, basically, JRP's going to be farming up to 50 missiles and four super missiles, and we need that to kill Mother Brain. That is exactly enough ammo to kill Mother Brain and destroy two of the Semitites. Yeah, supers are a much more, more rare drop, so even though he has full missiles and full health, he can't get super. Yeah, that's because the Come on. does not actually affect super drops, it only affects missile drops. Mm -hmm. huh? Come on, supers. And super Come missiles on. are about a 10% drop from this, but as you can see, the RNG is kind of cyclic. What is this? Plus RNG. There it is. Oh, there's there's one. one. Plus RNG. So actually, hold on. Isn't that technically a super oh drop in Torian? <laughs> yes, it is. It is technically. All right, so this is the Zebatite skip. And the way this works is really Ooh. Well. nice. Very nice. He has to unmorph on the same frame that the bomb explodes. And I'm not actually totally sure how it works, so I asked Dragon Fangs beforehand. 
Let me, let me go to the source here. Whoop. And according to Dragon Fangs, I'm not actually sure how that puts you through the Zeb. So. <laughs> Straight from the source, there we it, go. It's great when the person doing the tool oh, no. assisted speed run doesn't know how it works. Yeah. Um, I need a drop. Yeah, this is really... Oh, no. Ooh. Oh, no. Oh, no. Uh, Why? Please? Yeah, that... More, more blast RNG, come there on. There it is. Nice. What, one missile. Okay, perfect. <laughs> He's alive. It's the time to be like that. And... Can he get it? Uh, oh. You're supposed to be able to get a speed boost through there because you can run against Mother Brain's dying corpse and somehow that counts as you running for a distance. I'm not totally Excuse sure me? of the math on that one. It's been weird. I don't mind works like that at all. No, I actually do. Uh, it's, Go because, on. it's because the wall there is not actually an invisible wall. It just keeps teleporting you back to the same spot. Oh, cool. Oh, that explains a lot. Yeah, you can do it against Braid, too, if you somehow get Speed Booster before killing the boss that's blocking Speed Booster. That's, that's a randomizer. <laughs> that's yeah. definitely randomizer here. Yep. All right. So our auditorium games... The game's over. over. GG's. Not, yeah. yeah, not yet, not yet, not yet. You yeah, know. This is where Zero Mission really diverges from NES Metroid. It adds this whole additional segment after you kill Mother Brain. Yeah, I love it, honestly. Like, if, if you play NES Metroid, then play this game, this part just blow your mind. I love it. Yeah, so now we've got some lore, and if I check with Crunchy real quick, we might have a donation or two that could be right here. Yep, we got time. Yeah, I think we got a few of those. In fact, we have one right from the source, $100 from Dragon Fangs. Ah, oh, there we go. Who says, uh, good luck to Jill on the run. I hear this game is pretty good. Save the Magoos. It's a good game. Yeah, and, uh, I think so. Yeah. I prefer it. Yeah, we also have $25 from the man, the legend, Rastu123, who says, good luck, JRP, on the run, and good luck to Hurt, Shasta, Barnaby, and Sam on the commentary. <laughs> Ooh, Sam isn't there. Yeah. Oh. Ross was also supposed to be on the couch here, but he unfortunately had some work stuff come up and could not make it to the event. I miss him. So we're a little sad that Ross isn't here. At least I am. I don't know about these guys. I like Ross. He's a cool dude. I agree, yeah. Yeah, I'm sad as well. Don't worry. All right, so now we're in the suitless section. Uh, it's called the suitless section because you don't have a suit. Because she took off her suit when she got back in the ship and then got blasted out of the sky and didn't put her suit back on when, you know, as it was crash landing. Yeah, I'm not, time. I'm not sure how, how that all works out, but uh, the general idea of suitless is it's really just entirely platforming. There's a few specific thing, places where we we'll want to move through rooms in ways to manipulate the space pirates. But for the most part, it's just six minutes of straight Horton up skip. platforming. Oh, nice. Yes. Very Not important. get the map of shame. No map. Nope. Shout out to Scotty. Yeah. That's, ma that's map skip. It stays like 10 seconds or so. Yeah, it's actually pretty significant. It's, it's the map of shame <laughs> in it's, this it's, case. It's deceptively difficult to do because the map hitbox extends way in front of the actual map and not at all behind it. So you can, like, be standing where it appears as though you should be getting the map and you're not getting the map. I should probably explain the mechanics of Zero Samus here in this case. Yeah. So, so, so what essentially what it is. Oh, whoa, 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 whoops. Oh, no. That's not quite right. He was going for the okay, old strats. That's all it was. It, right. Oh, yeah, old strats. <laughs> okay, this is a fairly recently discovered strat. It saves. Um, okay, it doesn't save any time if you don't get it, <laughs> unfortunately. But be with me. the idea was to get the two pirates to shoot each other. Yeah, it's a pretty cool strat, and it saves a full second, actually. There's a fair bit of setup involved, but it does wind up saving time. JRP. Uh, you shouldn't have done that. <laughs> oh, no. Please. Uh, okay, don't, don't shoot we're that. Fine. We're fine. Okay, we're good. <laughs> Just have to wait it out. The pirate's not smart enough to jump over the wall. Yep. No, he, he's like, well, I saw her come in here, and now there's a wall here. I don't he know can, where she He can look up. It's okay. Yep. It's like Zoolander. He can't lift. <laughs> But Samus here, Samus can crawl. Samus can crawl. So if you ever wanted the answer to the question, why can't Metroid call? Crawl. Presumably she can call. It just took her till this game to do it. Right. Yeah, it, it's a difficult skill to pick up. So it's, also, it's also very difficult to do while wearing a suit. Well, right. And I mean, why would you when you have the Morph Ball? Exactly. Morph Ball's faster. Fast search lights, this is a great strategy here. 
uh, JRP is going to be, rather than waiting here for the searchlight to get out of his way, he's just going to abuse the fact that, it hip, that its hitbox is just terrible. It's at the very, very center, and that's it. <laughs> it's... I don't know why they did it that way. The hitboxes in this game are sometimes a mystery. And other times they are actually boxes when they shouldn't be. Yeah. Like Ridley's tail. Yep, yep. <laughs> Ridley's hitbox in general is just all sorts of silly. Um, you can actually, if he gets into his swoop attack, his swoop attack is actually, his hitbox is above Samus, so he'll swoop right down and won't hit her. He has like two pixels below it. It's kind of funny to watch. Shout out to all these de developer intended shortcuts, by the way. That skips a few rooms, and same as the one before he went through a wall. Yeah, there are several developer intended shortcuts here. Ah, uh, good. He shot, he shot, um, do we have Roger. a name for him? Roger. 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 I didn't know we gave him a name yet. I'm not sure that we did, honestly, but I'm going to assert right here, right now, his name's Roger. Okay. Let's go, Roger. Roger. He's my favorite character. Roger favorite. notices that you shoot him. But he doesn't do anything about it. He's a bro. Roger's a total bro. He's just like, was that a, was that a fly? Yep. He's mad chill. He might have been on coffee break, too. That's a fairly difficult jump, that one right there. It doesn't look like much, but it's difficult. And this is one of those scenarios where it's faster to just get detected. There's a couple. Oh, this is actually the Sam Strat room. Shout out to Sam again. Good oh, beer today. Moving through this room in this very particular way the pirate lets you get yeah. undetected right there, and it saves like half a second. Is it really half a second for that? It's pretty small because because uh, these aren't full door transitions, so they're much quicker. True. I guess before you went to the save room on the right, it's gonna, or the left's gonna soon. Of all the incredibly diverse number of strats that Sam has come up with, uh, that's the one that's called Sam Strat. It's, it's fairly elaborate, though. It really is. There's a lot going on. There, there. is. That that's pirate very tricky. Does not exist. Fun fact. He's, he, he has no hitbox. Nope, the power bomb does not exist either. It's just there for visuals to tell you yep. that power bombs exist in the game. Yep, yep. Okay, we're good. This room can be surprisingly deadly, but JRP got through no problem. Yeah, so the stun gun, when you shoot it, it, like, it has like a cool, has like a cool down so you can shoot like another stun. Yep. In this case, and that's how you get through there. You have, to have just enough time to shoot the other pirate. It's messed it up, but you just forget. You, you pretty much die there. It's really bad. Yeah, if you make a mistake in that room, you can find yourself in hot water real quick, especially because in a normal PB attempt run, uh, he would not have healed at the start of this section, so he would have not enough health to take a hit from the pirate. That is obviously not a marathon safe strat whatsoever. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, you don't get to see that in marathon runs very common. Only. But we're, pa we're past the stealth section. We're now going to go fight a boss? Um, uh, yeah, more like a... I'd say it's a boss. It's more like a roulette wheel than a boss. I mean, it's enough yeah. that we gave it a name. Right, Charlie. Yeah. Charlie. This is Charlie. Charlie. And we got a bit of lore here. Crunchy, a donation? Wow, how appropriate you should ask that. We have $20 from Kirby Master, who says, Kirby Master here, I'll donate another 20 if JRP gets the Charlie glitch live on stage. Oh. Ooh. And another 20 if he gets Iron Ted missile glitch live on stage. Ooh. Do you want me to go for it? I can go for it. Do the thing. Yes. Do the thing. Both of those Money is on the line. Really cool, and they have not really any impact on the speedrun. But they're really cool nonetheless. The ends up with good luck, fellow nerd, and shout out to the GBA Tour community. Just Magoo it. Shout out to Kirby. Shout Kirby's Kirby. a great dude. So this this boss, you have to shoot those sigils with a charged pistol shot, and they appear after a random amount of time. So this, that was good. He's also moving back and forth here because if you stand still for too long, it'll fire lightning at you. Yep. Um, so he's intentionally staying mobile so it doesn't do that. Although when you get to the last one, it starts firing them at you anyway. Right. And, um... Ooh, nice. That was, that was nice. That was really, a really good really fight. good last pattern because you got... Uh, to get? Oh. Uh, that's okay. That's a frame perfect glitch. You have to turn around on the right frame. And... Uh, essentially, it makes it so you, like, you move around during that part there instead of staying still. Yeah. And it glitches out the screen, too. <clears throat> yeah, it just gets a few glitch sprites on screen. Screen. Looks funny, but... All right, so now we have cool. our fully powered suit. Yep. Uh, and all those unknown items we've been picking up, Plasma Beam, Gravity Suit, and Space Jump, those are now active. In addition, they give us a free Varia suit, because why not? Why not? Yeah, why not? And, you know, 
Personally, if someone sold me this suit as fully powered, I might ask for a refund. We're still missing a lot of power-ups. <laughs> we don't have long beam, we don't have wave beam, we don't have screw attack, and all of those make surviving this part of the game so much easier. JRP's also gonna be picking up the last super missile tank here, and that's just for the final boss fight. Six super missiles is, nice. whoops, is quite a bit faster than four, and we're taking advantage of more developer-intended shortcuts here. And despite the fact that we're at the end of the game, Pirates are still hitting for 50 damage. So if stuff gets out of control, you, you can, again, find yourself in uh, very hot lava, as it were. But now we can fight back, so it's okay. Before we just could, we just run past them and stun them, and that's it. Yep. Now we, now can, we can kick all the butts. Yep. All the pirate butts. You can see JRP is <laughs> making a lot of use of Charge Beam, and that's because Charge Beam with Plasma actually does kill the pirates really quickly. the end of the game here. We're going, we're pretty much backtracking where we came from. Yeah, there was a door in the pirate mothership that he could not get through in the stealth section. Yep. Um, and he needs to backtrack through that. It requires a missile to get through it. Mm -hmm. So he couldn't go that way initially, and that's the way to get to the final boss. Yes. Well, the final enemy. No, not even the final enemy. There's still plenty of other enemies. I, I feel I feel that boss is a generous term, but that's me. The final um, pretends to be a boss. The okay. final encounter. The the boss imposter. I mean, he's got a special soundtrack. How do I follow up on a, an earlier thing that happened here? Real Go for quick? it. Because we have $160 from C. Scotty W. I wish I could get that many supers in Turian. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Scotty, uh, for reference, Scotty is the world record holder in literally every single category in both this game and Fusion. He's really good GBA Metroids. Yeah. And honestly, not even just GBA Metroids. GB Metroid in general. He's got top tier times in... Metroid 2 as well. And, yep, and NES Metroid, Metroid and NES Metroid. Yeah. He's also just a great dude, and he's found a lot of small little strats that we use here in these runs. More so for 100% than any percent, but... Uh, so, Workbots, much better in this game than they are in Super Metroid. You can actually speed them up by shooting them, which seems violent to me, but, you know. You do what you gotta do, you can fast. Yep, for sure. Uh... Ah, <laughs> oh, cool. Mm. I don't know why they didn't die. Yeah, that, that, that's not quite what's supposed to go on there. But this... This room, I think, was just meant to show you how cool power bombs uh, were. Uh... uh move? Okay, oh. good. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. I think that room is just meant to show you, hey, power bombs are neat. Despite the fact that it shows up before you get power bombs. Yeah. <laughs> They, meant, they mean for you to backtrack out of the area, because power bombs are like right, are way up ahead here. Um, and you meant to go backtracking to go searching for all the items you couldn't get before. Wow, that's a convention. Ooh, nice nice. hitboxes. Yeah, so frozen enemy hitboxes, as you can see, not good. You know, JRP just was able to climb up the ledge and walk directly through all of them. But yeah, power bombs are just off to the left here, and we don't need them. Thanks to another developer intended shortcut. And, like, really, all you do is just blow open those blocks with them, and then congrats. Dude, that's you all did. you power bombs for. <laughs> Congratulations, you've done it. Yep. All right, so this is the final boss fight. You can tell because there's crumble blocks there that let you think about what you're doing. Savor the impending terror. <laughs> you really want to go in here. Yep. And, you know, we do. Uh, because as um, we'll be seeing very momentarily, let's just going to be silent for a second here. Whoa! Oh, uh, they missed one of them. Okay, that's fine. There we go. As you can see, this boss is all bark and no fruit. Yeah, on this category, um, you, I mean, yeah, for this category, you only need six super missiles to kill it. Yep. It really doesn't take much. Oh, huh. so I'm close. a little surprised that missed, but okay. Yeah, that, that boss is just... If you use a few super missiles, that boss is really not much of anything. The, the, the only category that boss is relevant in is low percent. 
Hundred percent hard, actually. Ah, uh, yeah. Really tough. But yeah, other, other than that, those are like the very few specific scenarios where zero mission bosses are actually hard. So now we have another escape sequence. This time he has five minutes to get out, and he needs to get um, all the way back to that hangar where you where there was like a blue door that he couldn't get through. Um, yep. That is going to let him through now. Yep. And five minutes is. Very More generous. Than time. <laughs> yeah. I don't think you can do it though. I, I believe in you. Uh, we do have one final trick coming up here, and I think I think it's the coolest one in the game. It's, it's super cool. Uh, unfortunately, oh, no. it's gonna be a little slower than normal because JRP oh, is. Yeah, you gotta turn around. So, so now we've got a few few seconds here to just think about what we've done. This is some good music. I like this music. So he's he's starting right, right there. He's gonna break the speed block. He's gonna go back to get the speed booster. It happens. It happens. He's not gonna do the ball spark back up. Come on, JRP. He's gonna all spark right, here through go. here. Carry this all the way up the room. One more recharge. Take the ball spark, and we're gonna see at least half of this mothership in one spark. Once again, another developer intent shortcut. Yep. And now we've got the Black Pirates right here, which thanks to a cheese strat that's really, really old. I don't even know when this was first found. Probably 2003. Oh, this was the game. This was. <laughs> Come up a timer here. And time. time. I was saying I could control the ship there if one of our arms being a gun. It's fine. It recognizes gun as um, as an appendage. Yes. Yeah. Just by all, right. all the space pirates have arms. It, it, guns, it, right? it, it's a touchpad. Ah, of course. This is the future. It just goes like to control the ship. So that was Metroid Zero Mission Any Percent. And now we get this wonderful little it's end screen. This category doesn't look too hard, but it's just so easy to lose time everywhere. Yeah, it really is. Bad luck to failing one thing. Yeah, so it's weird enemy this patterns in right, yeah. rooms. It's very easy to die as well. Yes. Uh, they get the yeah, normally, really unfortunate Taurine drops. Yeah, normally you would do this run with only a single energy tank, and that's that gets really hairy in a few spots. So JRP opted to pick up a few safety tanks, which is a good call. Shout out to the Ferris music as well, too, for being really, really good. Absolutely. I think it's the best track in the game. I... Mm, yeah, it's up there. It's definitely up there. Yeah. It's a shame because, like, Metro Fusion's track music is not really on par of this at all. I this think feels it's, very satisfying. I think it's good, it's just not this good. Yeah, this, this is very satisfying when speed the game. Absolutely. This is triumphant. Exactly. So, yeah, we just watch the credits roll, we see the game time. Any bets on the game time? I'm I'm thinking this is gonna be. I'm, gonna I'm thinking 20, 28.05. I'm going with that. I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with twenty seven fifty three. Okay. I'll go twenty eight flat. Split the middle. Okay. How about you? Oh, you can't hear us. He has his headphones off. Ah, uh, yeah. That's okay. Just a Super Mario Club for testing Metroid. Yep. It's good they're they're branching out in other in other uh, yeah. series. I'm proud of them. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Almost to the end as well. Yep. This is just the last last bit here. We got some uh, some, some uh, lore at the end here too. Oh yeah, we do have lore at the end. I forgot yeah. about that bit. Lore slash uh, childhood drawings, I guess. Speaking of lore, John, I think I have one here that you might get a laugh out of. Got $25 from Bitch the Gamer. Roger isn't the bro we need, but the one we deserve. Hashtag Roger the bro. <laughs> <laughs> he is a bro. He sees that you're there and he just says, no, you know what? We'll let this one slide. Take fellow drugs. I really want to know where she got crayons. It's carving. It's on Rock. the wall. I think that's like, it's like chisels. Ding, ding, ding. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I guess it's only a GBA screen, so they can't show that much detail. 
this will be the game time. And the moment of truth. Oh, oh wow. Okay. 33. Wow. All right, so that's it for hmm. that's it for us. Any it. final remarks, JRP? Uh, this game is awesome. Play it. Is. I agree. Yeah. Thanks for watching. This run is quite difficult to do. It is. It really is. It is. Excellent, excellent job, it's JRP. Really hard, yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I hope you enjoyed it. Yeah, definitely. Thank you so much, JRP, for that fantastic zero mission run. He's not exaggerating. I run this game. This is not an easy category. He made it look real easy. But make sure to stick around, because coming up next, we've got Mega Man 7 with PJ. And let me tell you, missing that one would absolutely be a poor life choice. Before then, it seems like a lot of you have some things to say about Metroid, so I'm going to uh, pass those along here. We have $100 from Thea and her dad. We love Metroid and Games Done Quick. Happy to donate such a great cause and looking forward to an awesome week. And $100 from I Am Gibbon. Love me some Zero Mission. Keep up the good work, y'all. We'll certainly try. All right. For those of you just joining us, this is Awesome Games Done Quick 2020. We are powered by Twitch, so we're going to take a few just to hear some words from them. See you back in a bit. And we are back. Welcome back, Internet. We hope you missed us, because we certainly missed you. But let's not waste any time. Let's jump right back into your donations. We have $100 from Skeletal Moth. Greetings from the second row. First time in person. Hey, welcome. And good luck to the runners. We have $500 from Syntec. who says, hey, hey, Sensei, how you doing? Hope you're enjoying this so far. We have $45 from William Donahue. Another year, another AGDQ. Catching it live is always a joy, especially when you get to see so many great gamers gathering for an awesome cause. Keep up the great work, everyone. Here's $45 toward the Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga co-op final boss. We can, 
you can absolutely do that. For anyone wondering about that one, that's at 1,561 of 10,000. So if you'd like to see that, you know what you have to do. Now, excuse us, we're going to take a quick moment to hear a word from Annapurna, one of our sponsors. We'll be back shortly. And we are back once again. Can't get rid of us that easily. <laughs> but let's see what we got here. All y'all's generosity is lighting up the room brighter than any Orlando sun could. We've got $250 from Crepheus. Here we go! We have $25 from Captain Swag 101. Good luck to all the runners and thanks to all the people behind the scenes keeping everything running smoothly. This donation goes toward the Superstar Saga Co-op Final Boss, one of my favorite games of all time, and I gotta see that crazy incentive. $50 from The Sound Defense. It warms my heart to see how much good gamers can do when they come together. Here's to another 10 years of GDQ. Put this toward the Sonic 06 bonus game. Oh, buddy. It, it, let me tell you, friends, if y'all haven't had a chance to see the Sonic 06 speedrun, it is something you absolutely need in your life. <laughs> you don't even know. And that one is going to be coming up tomorrow. That one's currently at 5,200 of 36,000, so we've got a ways to go, but you can, I cannot, <laughs> I cannot underestimate, I cannot overstate just how incredible this run is. You thought the game was broken casually? You ain't seen nothing yet. $50 from Anonymous, awesome zero mission run for a great cause. Game on, guys. We have $10 from Clad in Shadows. Give me that Metroid mug. Yes, indeed. We do have a fantastic Do Not Feed Metroid mug that is available as one of our many prizes. If you go and go to www.gamesdonequick.com slash sweepstakes, you can see all of the fantastic prizes available, which include a Metroid Do Not Feed mug, a t Metroid Tumblr, and a Metroid title screen print, and Metroid isn't your thing. We've also got, currently, Perlers from Binding of Isaac, a Chain Chomp candy print, and many, many other things, including the absolutely grand prize of all, the heroic replicas, custom replica of the Master Sword, which you get if you donate $200 cumulatively over the course of the week. That is quite a prize. We have $5 from Commissioned. GDQ is me and my friends' favorite time of the year. Thank you so much for hosting each year. Cheers to my friends, Krogan and Sim. We have $5 from Understandable. First donation to a GDQ event. And even though it's not a lot, I'm so happy to show my appreciation for this event and everyone who partakes. Understandable, thank you so much for your donation. It may not, you say it's not a lot, but every little bit counts. Do not think that just because you can only donate five or 10 or even one, that that's not enough. It counts, and it's going toward a fantastic cause in the Prevent Cancer Foundation. In fact, let's talk a bit about the PCF, why don't we? Prevent Cancer Foundation was founded in 1985 and is a US-based nonprofit with a mission to save lives across all populations through cancer prevention and early detection by focusing their work through research, education, outreach, and advocacy. 
They have the vision to stop cancer before it starts. And if you want to find out more about the PCF, you can do that at preventcancer.org. We have $30 from Lash Gooby. My first week at work will be productive, I think. I am 100% certain your week will be very productive, assuming your job is to watch speedruns. You will reach productivity levels you never thought possible, let me tell you. We have $25 from V24. Congratulations on 10 years of GDQ. Though I'm not a gamer, I've had a lot of fun and learned lots about games over the last few years watching with my husband and roommate. My brother has been battling cancer since 2014, making your work all the more personal. Thank you for organizing this event for a great cause. And here's to 10 more years. Thank you so much for generosity, V24, and we wish your brother the best in fighting cancer. $25 from Sparrows. May the games be quick and the donations many. Everyone have a nice 2020. We hope you have a good one too, Sparrows. $25 from Night Swipe. Thanks to all the staff, admins, and production that make this event possible. Cheers. We have $500 from Tim Telshin Aldridge. <laughs> Tim, obviously the strong, silent type, not having any comment with that donation, but thank you so much for your generosity. Now, I've been seeing plenty of folks talking about some of these exciting upcoming bid wars and donation challenges, but let me talk to you about the one we got coming up here in only two hours. If you look at the schedule, you might see we have this really cool Star Wars Escape from Yavin 4 run, but turns out we have a bonus level in that run. And if you want to see it, we have to hit 7,500. Now, we're, at the moment, we're a bit over 1,600. So, from go from 1,600 to 7,500 in two hours, I think we could do that with our eyes closed. So, what do you say? Can we get this in two hours? <laughs> 